specialize in private sector partnerships at IOM. And joining us today is Tanya Derovic of IOM and Mariana Nunez representing Impact Hub Network. So just some brief housekeeping rules about this session. We're going to make some brief opening remarks. Um, the session will be a presentation-based format. Then we'll open it up for questions, but feel free to write any of your questions in the comment box. And then our speakers will make some concluding remarks. So we're here today um, to really discuss inclusive entrepreneurship. In the last decade, we've really seen the power of entrepreneurship grow. Built, it built the world's leading companies today. And these companies are also probably here at the Leader Summit. Entrepreneurship is an important foundation for both developed and developing economies. And it really holds promise for generating value, creating jobs, fostering innovation. But what we do see also is that it lacks equal opportunity. We feel inclusive entrepreneurship looks to foster an ecosystem that ensures inclusion for all. And this partnership between IOM and Impact Hub focuses specifically on the inclusion of migrants. We've seen during over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic that the informal sector has really taken a hit. We see soaring rates of unemployment across the globe, and also that there are particularly particular groups that are vulnerable as a result. With migrants at the center, IOM is developing a range of programs focused on building back better post-COVID. So given that we recognize that migrants have agency and innovation, and this needs to be put to the forefront. So this session really is looking to highlight the importance of partnership, um, this partnership between Impact Hub and IOM, and that together building inclusive ecosystems for entrepreneurship across the globe is, is really the goal. So it's also an invitation to join this effort with Iowa and Impact Hub. And as we in partnership seek to provide better opportunities for migrants within this space, we'd love for you to join the effort. So with that, I'm very happy to introduce to you our speakers, Tanya Dadovic. She hello. is, hello. <laughs> Tanya is IOM's regional thematic specialist on labor mobility and human development at the regional office at IOM in Cairo, Egypt. She oversees labor migration programming across 17 countries within the MENA region. And she's been with IOM for 24 years, acquiring <laughs> vast experience, working on a range of issues related to labor migration, entrepreneurship, and diaspora engagement. And I'm also happy to introduce Mariana Nunes. Mariana currently runs global development efforts for the Impact Hub Network, developing social entrepreneurship support programs and building ecosystems initiatives across the globe. She holds a master's degree in social innovation and entrepreneurship from LSE. And she's also a social entrepreneur herself. She co-leads now Era Amor, a Brazilian social business that supports women facing abusive relationships. So with that, I'm, I'm going to share my screen. As I mentioned, this is presentation based and I will begin our first questions. So bear with me here. So you should see a PowerPoint in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. And we'll start with the first question. And please, mm -hmm. speakers, indicate when you're ready to move on beyond the slide, and I can do that. So why is inclusive entrepreneurship important? Why are IOM and Impact Hub partnering to develop ecosystems for inclusive entrepreneurship? You both have the floor. Yes, um, maybe I can ask you uh, to move on with the PowerPoint. And I think uh, in that case, since you asked us to start with the first question, maybe you can move to the first uh, 
to the next slide and we will maybe skip the introduction where we just provide some basic information about our organizations as such. So why does IOM actually engage on inclusive entrepreneurship? Well, we see and we have seen uh, multiple um, entrepreneurs um, in different, very different settings, in humanitarian settings, conflict settings, post-conflict settings, development settings. Um, and we see that basically entrepreneurship is indeed a very effective way to include migrants and refugees in the local economies, um, where they have a possibility to share their knowledge and to basically demonstrate their entrepreneurial spirit. Um, we have seen migrants creating transnational enterprises, cross-border networks, creating new market opportunities. And this is why we consider that entrepreneurship is extremely important and is something that needs to be promoted. We see entrepreneurship, especially now, and we will may, maybe back a little bit more in detail on this uh, during COVID and especially after COVID as a part of a long-term solution um, that can address the consequences of COVID, but can also address the consequences of large movement, forcibly displaced people, in addition to important measures uh, that are put in place to cope with immediate effects of the humanitarian crisis. We now have a health crisis. Um, that in, in fact uh, will trigger a lot of socioeconomic consequences. So again, entrepreneurship is, is a key in the response to, to COVID-19. Um, the creation of economic opportunities for all after, you know, is especially for us, um, very important having in mind not only the SDGs, but also our global compact on migration, where we all adhere to the purpose of leaving no one behind. And one of the one mechanism that we think to achieve that is again through the promotion of entrepreneurship. Over to you, Mariana, for impact tap. Thank you, Tanya, and thank you, Lindsay, for an introduction. And let me say hello to everybody who's watching. Uh, we got a hello from Nigeria, so hello, and if you guys want to introduce yourselves to the chat and just say hello, it would be great because we have no idea who's online watching us. Um, so just a brief par uh, parenthesis here to welcome everybody. And so for us at Impact Hub, and Lindsay, you can move to the following slide, please. For the Impact Hub, for those who don't know us, we are a global network that supports social entrepreneurship across the globe. We are in more than 55 countries, more than 100 cities, and we host a community of uh, more than 16,000 uh, entrepreneurs globally. And for us, our name already says, we are an impact hub, uh, which means the all the idea of inclusion, uh, reducing inequalities, and all the goals that we have, the sustainable development goals, it's actually embedded in our theory of change. It's part of who we are. It's part of the of what we are trying to achieve. So besides everything that Tanya said in terms of the importance of inclusive entrepreneurship and the work that IOM does, for us as intermediaries, uh, it's always very important. It's also very important to see the role that we can play actually in really achieving inclusion and reducing inequalities in a space of entrepreneurship, because there there are some studies already around the role of the accelerators to support SMEs development. And they are really successful in supporting them to grow and to access capital. However, the same is accelerators. They're the ones who unconsciously are still perpetuating biases, right? Um, therefore, we always have to rethink how we are giving access to those resources and to whom we are giving access to those resources. So. Most accelerators, they follow markets uh, and verticals that already have commercial potentials. Most of them are highly selective, usually focusing on the highly educated, uh, high in, uh, income entrepreneurs. And most of them are time bounded and take into consideration the ones that already have the discourse that, market likes to, that the market likes to see, which is not really uh, very inclusive. So for us, 
in terms of entrepreneurial support to marginalized communities and migrants are included in, in, those, in those categories, we have to change our approach. We have to be much more realistic on what we are expecting from those entrepreneurs. Uh, we have to be intentional on the selection process. So we have to go to them. We have to join forces with other community organizations that are tr trying to support them on integration and inclusion. Uh, because sometimes we ourselves cannot access those communities. Many impact hubs across the globe, they are very well positioned and very well integrated in, in communities in their local level. However, we can always do better. We can always reach for more people. Therefore, joining efforts and working in collaboration is part of what we do and what we see it's really relevant when we're talking about inclusion. And then having a more long-term view uh, not expecting the entrepreneurs to thrive in six months' time because loads of the loads of accelerators and many of the support that exist uh, out there, they are very packed, they have very clear objectives, and you have to reach this goal by this time. You know, like you have to pitch for the investors, and like who actually are the ones ready for taking this journey? So sometimes you have to take a step back and really rethink how we are offering the support to migrant entrepreneurs, you know, being more inclusive, work a lot on community building and integration, uh, and sometimes go far beyond just the business skills set that we provide usually as traditional accelerators, incubators. Some, not to say most of uh, entrepreneurs from marginalized backgrounds suffer a lot from non-confidence because they're so used to have doors shut in their faces, uh, they're just not confident enough to come forward, to apply for a program, or even to just show up. So having a different approach, really rethinking how we as intermediaries in this space of entrepreneurship are providing the support is super important. And that's why for us, looking into inclusion is, uh, is a key aspect. We don't want to just replicate the unconscious bias that we see everywhere. And just having a link to what's going on in the world right now, all the Black Lives Matter movement in the uh, past weeks, really like sh put down, put back in our faces how our unconscious bias are super strong even in the impact sector, even us who are trying to do good, who are trying to make the world the, the best place possible and really achieve the sustainable development goals, even ourselves, we have to look back and say, look, we haven't been good enough. You know, we have to do more. Um, and it's really unconscious bias. It is. We have to acknowledge that. So the same happens when we are providing support. The same happens when we are including the entrepreneurs, um, and I see here a comment, I totally agree on the importance of known business skills. Definitely, that's, that's something that we see a lot in many of the, the programs that we run that focus on marginalized communities and migrants included. Thank you, Mariana. That brings us back to our next question. Why is it so important? I mean, post COVID-19, uh, maybe once we're out of this health crisis to invest in inclusive entrepreneurship? And what's the role of small and medium-sized businesses in building back better? Yeah, can I ask you to move to the next slide then? Um, so I think uh, Mariana has already, you know, pointed to, to this um, innovation potential and yet at the same time, the need to really go out and reach out uh, to the migrants. We see already in the settings where we are currently providing, obviously in the current, in right now, more the humanitarian support. And yet we see already in these settings um, that it's entrepreneurs and small and medium-sized enterprises that immediately jumped, so to say, on the occasion to basically change their production. Um, and they started to produce uh, personal protective equipment, um, and we are, <clears throat> we are supporting them in that. That's uh, just one of the examples how we see 
over and over again that it's uh, entrepreneurs and SMEs that are usually the first ones to get back on their feet. And this is exactly why they play such a central role in the global economy. They do create the large percentage of jobs. And that is especially also true with uh, social enterprises and social innovators. Um, <clears throat> very often they serve uh, also as incubators for for some of them turn into the multinationals of tomorrow. So in that sense, you know, in this context of COVID, we see that the social innovators and social entrepreneurs can indeed offer new approaches to tackle the problems that we are facing now. Um, the, the pandemic has, we have seen, created new customer needs. Um, and with that, the pandemic is also generating opportunities, let's say, for innovation. And this is exactly where the SMEs can show their value um, by fostering more inclusive labor markets and maybe hopefully in this future more sustainable production and consumption patterns, creating new healthcare, uh, creating new educational environment and also technology solutions or designing also new approaches to, to citizens' participation. We see that the organizations operating in the fields of social innovation and social economy can contribute a lot to building more cohesive and more resilient societies and economies. Yeah, I think... Um that there are many studies, and we have some numbers right there, of the importance of SMEs uh, on economic development. The SME sector has been severely affected by, by the crisis, uh, and we know that they are the ones who create the largest amount of jobs that will help us rebuild economies. Um, and then especially when looking to social enterprises, they are being severely affected by all this. Um, so when we think about post-COVID and why we are talking about inclusion and entrepreneurship is really what do we want to build back? Uh, there are so many disruptions happening, many industries being disrupted and those industries have to make changes. They have to get back to their feet and how do we want that to happen? I think that's the question. And for us working in the sector of social entrepreneurship is really we see the huge potential not only on innovation, but on, on social impact, on tackling the crisis that we have today, climate change, the refugee crisis, and now the health, health crisis, right? And really rethinking also what is the economic model we want to follow through. We know the high consumption levels that we have today are just unsustainable. How we're going to change this and how we're going to change this in a way that we still integrate people and offer jobs. Uh, how can we keep this going? And social entrepreneurs are the ones who are the best placed to really think about all these questions and provide innovative solutions. So for me, the greatest importance now in lo into looking into inclusion is how can we power, empower all this diversity to help us uh, build the future that we need, looking to the greatest challenges that we face. I mean, one of the greatest challenges and the huge crisis that we have today is with the refugee crisis, right? If I'm not mistaken, you guys from the IOM can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the refugee crisis nowadays is the largest since the Second World War, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so besides the health crisis and the climate change crisis, we have a refugee crisis going on. That's going to be even, even, it's going to get even worse with the climate change um, crisis. So it's, how are we going to integrate all these people? How we how we are opening the doors? How are we creating access? How we are really changing the world, including all, all of them? You know, so one SMEs are what drive economies globally. They are the most the, the largest creators of jobs. Social entrepreneurs themselves are SMEs. Most of them uh, that can do not only create jobs but also create the impact that we need. Uh, in the world. They are the ones who have the solutions. They have they face the challenges. They know the problem. They are the best ones equipped to really deal with the problems. But we need to empower them. We need to give access. We need to give support. We need to open networks. We have to increase social capital because that's how things happen. Um, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys agree. Please, write on the chat. I see some people already commenting. <laughs> we really have to keep the dialogue open. 
thing, Mariana. I really, I really liked how, what you said about SMEs and how small companies, you know, they're often more agile and more reactive to societal needs, which is what we really need most at this time. I'm going to move on to our next question. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do we, kind of bringing it back to this, this partnership, engage in ent inclusive entrepreneurship? And what has been your approach, um, your experience working with governments and your experience working with migrants around this topic? Thank you, Lindsay, for the question. Can I ask you? Yeah, thank you. So, um, as I said, IOM um, has been working in very different, very many different settings with um, migrants, um, migrants and migrant categories, um, whether they be returning migrants, whether those are victims of trafficking, whether they are labor migrants that return after their labor migration, um, experience, uh, whether it's internally displaced people that are trying to rebuild their lives many times for the second or for the third time. Having worked with all these uh, migrants in, in these different settings, we realize that um, our work cannot only focus on supporting the migrants themselves with uh, the necessary support, access to funding or helping them, you know, in doing the registration of their businesses, um, marketing their products. We realized that in order for these efforts to, to have more sustainability, we really need to work with the governments. We need to work on the ecosystem um, that allows migrants, migrant entrepreneurs to thrive. Now, when I'm talking about migrants, um, I will not always say migrants and migrant categories, but uh, yes, we understand um, that we are talking about migrants and refugees. Um, and we have for that purpose uh, joined forces with UNCTAD and also with UNHCR that is responsible for the Global Compact on Refugees to develop a policy guide um, on entrepreneurship for migrants and refugees. And this policy guide is basically trying to, to list and to, to point out the, the main areas where governments and private sector can work together to really enhance the ecosystem for migrants and refugees. And uh, one is to basically make sure that these type of strategies on entrepreneurship are cohesive that the strategy for migrants and refugees is in line with the, let's say, strategies of SME development that are in place in that country. It's about optimizing the regulatory environment. Um, so basically the requirements in terms of skills recognition, who can open a business, um, what, what do they need to what are the criteria that they need to fulfill to be able to obtain a business license? Um, it's about the entrepreneurial education and skills development, something that uh, Mariana will talk a little bit more in 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 her next um, in her next uh, contribution, um, because obviously Impact Hub has uh, developed a very specialized type of training program and curricula for entrepreneurs. Um, it's about facilitating the technology exchange and it's about improving also access to finance. And um, then in all these points, this policy guide has basically, um, and maybe you can move also next to the next slide, Lindsay, so we can also show the policy guide and what it looks like. Um, this policy guide was launched in 2018 at the World Investment Forum together with UNCTAD and with UNHCR. Um, it's being rolled out currently um, in a number of countries and it's one of the, let's say, guiding tools that we will also use um, as we are developing together with Impact Hub uh, this global program to actually improve and enhance ecosystems for entrepreneurship, tackling all these different issues. Um, how 
that's basically IOM's role will be in this project to work with the governments, where Impact Hub will focus <clears throat> on the actual training and supporting the migrant entrepreneurs in their entrepreneurial journey. So coming from a lot of experience from the field, working with a lot of different migrant categories on enterprise development, in this particular global project, IOM will focus um, on our role as an intergovernmental organization to work with the governments on enhancing the ecosystem for inclusive entrepreneurship by tackling each of these areas. Over to Mariana. Thank you, Tanya. Um, so for us, we can move forward, Lindsay, uh, with the slides. So our approach uh, in terms of inclusion of migrants, marginalized communities in general, but our focus here, migrants specifically, is to have them working together, working on integration of communities. So one thing that we see a lot also is um, programs that are very specific to the migrant community and keeping them isolated, right? You don't integrate really them with the local communities. Therefore, we don't enhance their social capital in, their current, in the new country. So this is one thing, having them working together uh, mix, mixing groups, uh, offering safe spaces where they can feel comfortable and joining and coming in. And that only happens when we are able to collaborate with other organizations that are already very familiar to these communities that can provide to them the confidence and the trust that they can come to our spaces to join us and still feel comfortable and understand that they're going to be heard and we're gonna be, they're going to be understood because they do face different challenges than traditional entrepreneurs and we have to be able to accommodate all those all of those challenges uh, visibility and networking uh, helping them to be more visible so offering them the space to showcase their work or training them in websites newsletter blog posts social media just in general just trying to, to show people like hey these people have great potential look at them they're doing great work um, this is one of the, the key elements for us. Having an ecosystem approach uh, towards inclusion, which means we don't work only with the entrepreneurs, but we also want to work with other intermediaries in the space that are also supporting those communities. So the Impact Hub Network, uh, we have been running programs for many, many years uh, right now, and we run more than 200 programs per year. And we have started to codify all the learnings and all the knowledge that we have in different types of programs. So we have many countries running programs for migrants. So what we've been doing is trying to get the lessons learned from those locations and codifying that learning and now sharing with other organizations as well in the ecosystem. Um, so it's a, it's a knowledge that's not only to ourselves, but to everyone. We also engage partners uh, to provide funding and access to capital for the entrepreneurs. Again, unconscious bias is real. Uh, it's not an accident that female entrepreneurs don't raise investments as male entrepreneurs, although most of the time they outperform uh, male counterparts when provided the opportunity. So for migrants, it's very similar the case. So the unconscious bias really um, stop and stop stop the funders to really providing the the capital to to those entrepreneurs. So working with our partners in the space of impact investment is something very important and key for us. Offering a longer term uh, and ongoing support for them. So again, not only a very packed and short uh, period of time where we expect them to thrive. Uh, being completely unconsiderate of their situation. So being more long, having a long-term vision and still accompanying them, even when the program's over, having or providing them access still to the, to the network, to the spaces, to the community uh, of entrepreneurs, it's very important. And then that's when, I guess, we meet with the IOM. It's the work on advocacy for inclusive and bottom-up economic development. One thing that we see from our past experience is that we can 
like do a great work. Uh, we can, we want to provide to all of them. We want to support all entrepreneurs, refugees, migrants, people in the move in general. Uh, and sometimes we just face the wall of loss of the policy that's not really fit to include those entrepreneurs uh, in the country. So I think that's when uh, we meet with the IOM in this, in this challenge and really want to work together to not only support the entrepreneurs to thrive, but to allow policy to change and provide an environment that they can really thrive, right? They can, we can really include them in society. Um, and last of all, uh, we usually like to combine the entrepreneurial and employability support with social cohesion and social capital building formats. Um, again, creating opportunities and spaces to have the bonding of the local and the new communities joining in um, and increasing social capital for the entrepreneurs. So this is most of our approach. You can move forward to the next slide. We've run uh, several programs um, across the globe. This is just a quick like map and some examples of the programs. And I would say that for the Impact Hub Network, we really started to work uh, more focused on migrant entrepreneurship, of course, after the, the refugee crisis exploded with loads of migrants reaching to reaching the, the shores of Italy, uh, Spain, and other countries uh, in the Mediterranean region. That's when I guess it opened our eyes to, oh my God, we have to do something. We have to look beyond what we are doing. Therefore, there are loads of um, examples in Syracuse, for instance, in Italy. There is the ReLab uh, program, which is an entrepreneur support for holders of international protection uh, in Italy, offering microcredits for the entrepreneurs working uh, with the ILO and many other partners. This was a program funded by the European Refugee Fund. We also have uh, Athens uh, with Hack the Camp, which is a six-month solution design and incubation program for migrant and local entrepreneurs. Uh, this one was supported by the Onassis Foundation, the US Embassy in Athens, and also Microsoft and Intel. Uh, one thing that we love to do is really to mix different uh, partners and, yeah, and stakeholders from different sectors uh, to really create a more ecos ecosystemic, let's say, uh, view of, uh, of the work that we do. But one very interesting one that I really like is the example from Impact Hub uh, Bamako in Mali, a program it's called Next Economy, which really uh, which is about supporting the youth to gain the skills both either from employability or entrepreneurship depends on what uh, what role they want to take in life to avoid migration. So uh, really supporting them to stay in the country and further develop the country. So just a few examples, and one the last example I have is for Impact of Istanbul. Uh, we can move on to the next slide, please. It's a, it's a program called Build Your Future, uh, which is a six-month entrepreneurship skills building incubation program focused on Syrian entrepreneurs that are living in Turkey, youth from 18 to 35 years old. Uh, it's about finding feasible solutions. So it goes from ideation to startup stage. Um, this is also something that we do a lot in the impact hub. We, we have to do, we always divide the entrepreneurial journey in different stages. So you can provide specific support, uh, to the specific needs from each stage of the entrepreneurship journey journey. So we've had 130 participants across two programs that are already run in Istanbul. Um, we have just completed the second round, uh, in last year, and it was a national wide program. And the important thing is we not only offered this business skill building, which is the traditional from incubators and accelerators, but also a specific mentorship, looking holistically to their context and what their, what their life looks like, and also offering a post-program support. So they can still access the community, they can still be part of the Impact Hub, uh, they can still connect and find support wherever they need. So just a few examples of what we do um, and how we are doing it. And that's why actually we are joining the 
the IOM now to try to bring our expertise with entrepreneurship and their huge expertise on convincing those big names and governments to, to help us create a more engaging, inclusive uh, <coughs> system. Thank you both. That leads us very well to our next question, actually. Uh, why did IOM and Impact Hub join efforts on this topic? Uh, what added value do you see um, as Impact Hub in this partnership with IOM, Mariana, and vice versa? And what is really the role of the private sector in promoting inclusive entrepreneurship? Thank you, Lindsay. Please move on to the next slide, um, where we have tried to very roughly to basically show what are the main, where do we see our main role in working together on this? And um, as you can see, and I think Mariana um, has, uh, you know, in the best possible way, in a very lively manner, uh, with concrete examples, illustrated um, how they are basically supporting entrepreneurs in their journey and, uh, and how they also try to enhance the, the ecosystem around entrepreneurship. This is for us as IOM, I think uh, one of the main reasons, um, if not the reason why we wanted to partner with Impact Hub on this, we are in the process of developing, um, you can see the title, an Inclusive Entrepreneurship Award. Um, and the, this is a global program. We are currently working on a pilot phase of this project um, for which we are looking for private sector partners who want to engage with us on this. Um, and basically the idea is to bring together the approach that Impact Hub has developed over the years and has really specialized in providing this very targeted entrepreneur, entrepreneurial support to, to our projects, uh, which I would say are much more basic in their approach of uh, training and supporting migrant entrepreneurs um, with this whole idea of uh, networking and mentoring and helping people to, to build this community that can also uh, support that they, they, that they are moving on. What we as IOM can bring to this is um, that we have the linkages to the governments and to the ministries that are responsible to build the policies and the legal framework around entrepreneurship. And yet another thing is um, basically the linkages to diaspora, diaspora communities. So I mentioned briefly in the beginning that um, we have seen and we have had programs where we are specifically supporting migrants and host communities um, to engage in joint ventures and to link these ventures with uh, diaspora communities, um, basically to be able to reach out to international markets to new markets, uh, bigger markets than the local markets um, for which they would otherwise be producing. We want to help them to explore investment opportunities um, in other countries. We want to support programs uh, and we have supported programs that make these linkages by providing technical support for transnational migrant and refugee enterprises. We want to link them up to online platforms, e-commerce, um, that can help actually really innovate, for example, the handicraft sector by connecting migrant and refugee entrepreneurs um, with, uh, with such platforms. We want uh, the entrepreneurs to also consider nostalgia trade, which is something that every migrant, wherever he or she is going, is basically dependent on to be able to continue to buy food products or other traditional products uh, from home wherever they are. So that is something that the migrant and refugee entrepreneurs can really use. 
um, as, as a market niche and, and build on that. Um, we have created networking events you know, that are explicitly targeting transnational businesses and actors. Um, there are countless diaspora business associations. Um, I have had, uh, you know, the possibility to meet with some of them in my work um, that that have uh, fantastic ideas on, on how to basically link producers in countries of origin with the markets where they are based now and where they have their contacts. So we see the connection of uh, these entrepreneurs that the uh, impact hub will support in their early stages or in their growth stages, stages, yet to, with, uh, let's say, to another level by linking them up with uh, their diaspora networks, their diaspora communities, and see how that can help them to reach out to, to yet larger markets. Um, I think, again, going back one more time to, to COVID and what COVID has done to the economies globally and to supply chains. I think that is yet another possibility uh, to support SMEs and to support migrant entrepreneurs specifically in uh, uh, helping that they can basically help to rebuild certain supply chains. Um, yeah, so I think this is, um, besides the, the work with the government, yet a very important component that IOM can bring to the program. And uh, Mariana, maybe I leave uh, the, the common work um, on creating the new narrative to you. And uh, before we also maybe outline with a few words uh, where we see that the private sector would come in and what would be the specific role of private sector in this whole global undertaking? Yeah. So first of all, I would, I would say that um, it's been great to work in this project with the IOM. Um, it is a, it's, an, it's an ambition uh, program that we are developing right now. It's the Inclusive Entrepreneurship Award, as it says right there, Enhancing Migrant Entrepreneurship Ecosystem for Sustainable Development. Um, for me, particularly, it's been super, super amazing to work on this. The idea that we're going to pilot this in six different countries, covering, uh, trying to represent the globe, all the global regions. So this is going to be cool. And as Tanya was say, saying, one of the, one of our worries, no worries, one of the focuses we want to give in this program is really changing the narrative around uh, migrants and refugees. So. For me, particularly, I always feel very bothered when when I see them all being treated as uh, just beneficiaries of another program, poor human beings that need help, you know. And uh, we will really want to change that. For us, it's really putting them on the stage and, shake, and saying, like, look, these people are huge. They have great potential, and we need them. We need them to build our economies. We need to welcome them, open the doors, and just embrace their diversity and all their innovation because they are here to stay and they can really contribute with our our economies and our social development. So I think this is one of the things. So really working with media. So if you are from any media uh, organization, corporate, and wants to support us portraying uh, the entrepreneurs in a more sustainable and actually realistic way, on really the power that they bring to the table, feel free to reach out to us. We are going to look for partners in many, many different sectors. Uh, this is one thing. And then the greatest role of the private sector here, one, if you're in the media, the private sector, we are welcoming you to join us. Uh, if you are just a corporation that wants to engage your employees, for instance, to support and provide skills-based uh, volunteering, we would welcome you as well. You're welcoming anyone that really wants to engage in the topic and really be part of an inclusive global award focused on migrant entrepreneurship. Um, we are going to work with impact investors. If you want to work with us and support migrant entrepreneurs, increase the diversity of your portfolio and really dive deep into your unconscious bias because we all have them. 
So join us as well. We are here to do this work together. Um, if you are other support organizations or NGOs trying to offer uh, support to entrepreneurs, to migrants, refugees, skills-based, we are going to also have space for you to work with us. Um, who else am I forgetting, Tanya? I think that, I mean, we are looking to a, a very systemic approach here. We want to work with the whole ecosystem, from governments to intermediaries, to entrepreneurs themselves, to the media. We're going to go for all. Um, and that's the way I see. We have to be systemic and we have to collaborate. There's no way to change things for real if we don't collaborate um, and work together. Yeah, so um, just to, to uh, maybe make that extra clear, because uh, when you read Inclusive Entrepreneurship Award, you might maybe think that this is an award for entrepreneurs only. But in fact, all the stakeholders that Mariana has just listed, the impact investors, the governments, the media, the other support organizations that are also providing and support, technical support to entrepreneurs, um, the incubators, the whole ecosystem, we will have different categories. And in each category, we will basically um, award the best, the, yeah. the, the one that has gone, you know, the farthest, the one that has, uh, you know, been extra innovative in, in enhancing the ecosystem for inclusive entrepreneurship. And I think... Um, a particular role that we uh, that we see for, for banks, for microfinance, for for impact investors is that, especially now, um, in the post-COVID period, I think they play an extremely important role uh, in taking the lead and, and coordinating the resources so that the SMEs get the support that they need to to grow and and through that support help create the jobs and, and make the significant contribution that they can make to the economy, be they um, normal SMEs or be they social entrepreneurs. Um, we very much think that uh, it's the SMEs that can bring the much needed ability and the innovation and, and the dynamism to the markets where they are operating, whether it's going to be in Mexico or in South Africa or in Bangladesh or in Cambodia, or whether it's going to be in Europe, in Netherlands or in Italy or in Turkey for that matter. Yeah. So wherever you have situations where people are on the move because they are either returning, they're stranded, they aim to integrate. They want to engage in migration and development in their countries of origin. Wherever they are, you know, their, agil their agility and their ideas and their drive to succeed you know, can help the economies recover. They can help to, they will be the first ones to create jobs again, but they can't do it on their own. So we are reaching out to, to the banks, um, we are reaching out to the impact investors, we are reaching out to private sector, we are reaching out to foundations, we are reaching out to corporations. Like Mariana said, we, we see that uh, this is a joint undertaking. This is for all of us to, to work together to make this happen. Um, and in that sense, I think we will change the narrative on migration, we will change the narrative on what it is that migrants and refugees can mean for our societies. And we are, this is not a discourse that is particular to Europe. We are seeing this now all over the globe, whether it's in Latin America, with the Venezuelan crisis, whether it's um, in South Africa, you know, where you have huge numbers of migrant workers that are now stranded in South Africa, whether it's in the Gulf Corporation countries or whether it's in Southeast Asia, yeah, where millions of people will now basically, following the COVID crisis, return uh, to their countries of origin. And uh, so here we think that entrepreneurship, SME development can play a key role 
to the recovery from COVID and not only recovery um, as such, let's say for the migrants themselves, but uh, you know, migrants and migrant entrepreneurs, refugee entrepreneurs, doing their part to build back better. That's the ambition with inclusive entrepreneurship. And that's why we are doing this together with Impact Hub. Very well said. I couldn't see it. <laughs> yes, that was quite inspiring, I have to say. And this, this multi-stakeholder approach is really key for, for com combating conscious bias that we all face today. Um, noting the time, I will invite any of our participants to ask questions or make comments. We already have a couple of really nice comments. Um, and Tiga says, thank you all for a very interesting panel and discussion. Happy to connect, um, particularly um, for a, tur a project based in Turkey. So that's great. If any of you have, have any other questions, feel free to write them in the chat box. In the meantime, um, I will invite our esteemed speakers to make their concluding remarks. Mariana, you go first. I just wanted to say that this is a great uh, opportunity for us to, to bring uh, such a, a, an important topic, especially now with the COVID crisis and we all having to rethink how what what's going to be the world post post covid and what we really want to see and what we really want to build together therefore i would like to welcome everybody just to rethink our roles first as individuals uh how our unconscious bias how our now like day-to-day -day inequalities really can we really shift things uh, as individuals first and then how can we put that to our community and therefore our workspace and how can we really change things. So I will first just welcome people to think about that, something that's been in my mind in the past weeks a lot and in an individual level, but also then in an organizational level, this is a huge platform, a huge stage to really discuss how businesses are moving things and changing things for the best. So let's think about inclusion. Let's not leave it behind. And if you want to join us in any of those efforts that we mentioned, if you want to work with us in the project, that will be, it will be great to welcome you. So thank you. So I don't know how much more there is to add to what Mariana has, uh, you know, uh, just said. Um, of course, as IOM, we are really um, excited to be um, at the United Nations Global Compact Summit. Uh, we understand it's a very important event. It's an anniversary event. Um, so we will definitely also make sure that, you know, this presentation, uh, we will share that more widely also with our within our networks so that more people can hear about this idea and about this partnership with Impact Hub. And uh, we will definitely, we would very much welcome um, if uh, through this platform and uh, the people who have attended our uh, session, if they would want to get in touch with us. Um, Lindsay, are we supposed to share our emails or how, how would you- are more than welcome. Okay, yes, please share your then, emails in the comments box. Then we will do just that yeah, so that people can actually get in touch with Mariana and myself. Um, the two of us in the coming weeks, we will be reaching out to those countries that have been identified as the pilot countries for this global program. And uh, yes, I am likewise uh, very excited to work with Mariana and uh, with the Impact Hub teams and our teams on developing um, the, the more country-specific proposals. Yeah? Because uh, like I said, each of these countries has uh, a different context and, uh, and we aim, because we want to be inclusive, we want to make sure that this um, award competition 
uh, will speak to the context, um, whether it's in Cambodia or whether it's in Mexico or in Turkey, and to work that out in detail and at the same time continue to, to advocate for inclusive entrepreneurship as we are trying to, to engage with partners in this. Um, this is excellent, already an exciting journey. So this uh, session and this presentation here is for us basically a kickoff and of course a fantastic opportunity. So uh, thank you to the UN Global Compact on uh, providing this type of platform for, for organizations like ours that want to uh, embark on such a, such a journey. Thank you to everyone that was actually listening and uh, and uh, sharing their comments. And I can see that uh, we have connections being made already. Yes, Ooh. I can see that. Thank you, Mariana, for doing oh, that. Oh, while I'm talking. That at the same time, and I think we have a question there on the most challenging aspects of our work and what things we will most hope for. I think for me, I'm just going to reply to that very quickly. Is um, I'm Brazilian originally, and um, last year, but I've been in the UK for the past five years. And last year, I went to the to to São Paulo to a conference that ha that happened in the outskirts of the city. I won't call a favela because it wasn't a favela as such, but a very poor neighborhood in the outskirts of the city of São Paulo. Uh, it was about entrepreneurship, and um, there were many stakeholders really trying to look into. Mark very marginalized entrepreneurs and how to best support them. And at that moment, I was I was like, really, we really need to do uh, our homework here and how to engage them because it's not it's not the same thing. And of course, each country, each each context is a different one. So when looking into specific migrants, you have to really understand what are the challenges that specific community faces. You cannot just copy and paste, uh, you know, entrepreneurial support that doesn't work like that. You have to be really specific and really mindful if you want to be really inclusive. So that's um, so that's what I, I could say. And that's what I want to, the change that I want to see, even in ourselves as a, as a global network of social entrepreneurship, more and more. And this is something that's stopping our agenda right now. And uh, yeah, we are on the way to change. So I think um, that was actually a quite nice uh, closing remark. Um, unless, uh, are there other questions or comments that we should be answering? I think our time is almost over. Lindsay, we can I would also like to thank everyone that was uh, joining us for this session and will be will be sharing our emails. I'll do that right now. And um, yeah, my email is already there. So if you want to connect, send me a line. Please feel free. And yes, if you're interested in the project we are building together. We welcome you guys to join us. And thank you so much, Lindsay, for supporting us today and moderating the session and asking the questions. Um, yeah, we couldn't do it without your help, actually. <laughs> thank you. Both. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. And thank you to everyone that joined us today. And uh, have a wonderful afternoon. Yay. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.